The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, it's all about spring lawn care maintenance, as well as growing herbs. Our guest will be author of the Straw Bell Garden Book. Joe Karsten will be with us and answering your garden questions. And that all starts right now. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Welcome to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. I am your host, Joey Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner, Holly Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make your grass look greener, as well as preserving what you grow. Thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to the program, whether you're listening to us on one of the 15 radio stations broadcasting our program here in 2021 through our website, the parent website of our program, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Dot com or on the, under the Season 5 tab or podcast replay or in-studio video replay. We thank you for being part of the program today. There's a couple of ways in which you can get a hold of us, and that is via email at gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or if you'd like to call us and talk to us directly, you can do that. Our hotline is 1-800-927-SHOW. That's one 800 927 S H O W. Before we get in the program, I do want to make an announcement. If you're listening to this program, and if you are, you're listening, we appreciate that. We'd say that to you each and every program multiple times because there's many other things in which you could be doing with your time besides listening to our Garden Talk radio program. And because of you, that is why we are able to do this. If you go to our website, our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com, at the top of the page, you don't have to look for it. It's right there. It's our 2021 anonymous survey. It's a 14 question fill or click the box survey. And it gives us information anonymously from you in order to present to the sponsors of this program. Each year we re up with the sponsors, we bring new ones on. And that is the data in which we are able to present to them where you're listening from. You know, your, your demographic, uh, that, uh, you know, different things about how you listen to the program. And uh, if you'd like to do that, it's anonymous, and we'd certainly appreciate that. The WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, top of the page. So, Holly, let's get in the program and talk about spring lawn care maintenance. And if you're listening because you want a nice lawn or you have a nice lawn, then this is for you. If you don't care to have a nice lawn or you've already converted it to all garden space, well, then this is just a nice educational little piece here until we get in the second segment. So, sure. So, you can. A lot of people are like, do I do do lawn care in the spring? I've heard you do it in the fall. And there's definitely a lot of things you can do now in the spring. And one of them is to thatch or deep break your lawn. And what that means is you take one of those wire leaf rakes and you just kind of run it across nice and firm across your lawn and you just get up all the, the dead stuff and that's going to help fast. And you don't need a machine. You don't have to go rent one of these big fancy ones. Um, you can get a, a, a thatching rake or like you said, just a metal tine uh, leaf rake and you're you can do it very easily. Now, if you have massive acreages and you're trying to preserve this to a you know, a, a pristine level, then a machine might be the way to go. Right, but for most lawns, uh, just a rake is fine. You right. just rake across your lawn. And what this does is it gets rid of that old, dead, whatever it is, whether it be um, debris left over from raking leaves or just dead grass, what have you. It, it's kind of like when you deep clean your carpet. You get a lot of gunk that's settled to the bottom of the carpet. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah. So it's like whatever is just settled over winter, late fall, early spring, what have you. And then because what happens when that settles, it inhibits grass grass growth. So this helps bring that grass growth back to life. So if you don't want to aerate your soil getting a big machine, we do have a product for you. 
from our friends at natureslawn.com. They have a product called Aerify Plus, and it is designed to loosen the soil, the compacted clay soil with the poor drainage. Um, where the grass uh, doesn't thrive, you p apply this, and it will actually de uh, you know, um, it will aerate the lawn for you in an organic manner. Uh, you can use Garden-Talk to save 10% on your order. That's at natureslawn.com. So if you don't want to rent a machine, you can certainly just get the product here, and it will do it yourself. And then that the decompacting, that's allowing the roots once you get that loose soil it's going to allow the roots to be able to go down deeper and get the nutrients they need and it's going to be a healthier ecosystem all the way around right so and then another thing you can do is you can seed now you don't want to seed heavily but you can seed now so once you've thatched your grass possibly aerated it then you can seed it and you just want to seed nice and light and evenly. And when you seed, you want to bring, go back in with a rake and just kind of drag it into the soil. We don't need to bury the seed, but we need some soil and seed contact. If you just drop the seed on top of the ground, very little of it's going to germinate. So you want to kind of, you're going to use a rake, uh, a metal tine, either rock rake or leaf rake, and scratch it in the soil um, and, and do it that way. And then um, you can remove weeds in this process if you don't like the dandelions or um crab you know other other grasses in other weeds in your uh, grass you can remove them the process of doing all this will allow that thick blanket of sw uh, of grass to smother out those weeds right so if you remove the weeds now a typically the ground is very soft mm -hmm. right now so it's going to be easier to pull those weeds up and really get deep down that long tap root if it's like a, th a thistle or <clears throat> What's an, like a dandelion, I guess? A lamb's quarter. A lamb's quarter, yeah. So it's going to allow you to pull that root out. But also now, it, if you get it out now, it's not going to go to seed, and you're not going to have umpteen million more weeds you have to deal with on that. And then with all of this, we need to water, uh, consistent watering of the lawn uh, based on the type of seed. Now, one thing we need to cover here is based on where you're at, the type of grass in which you're going to seed. Either it's going to be a cool season grass or a warm season grass. Uh, cool season grasses are what, Holly? So they are grass, grasses that thrive in areas with cold winters. So they will grow, they'll grow most actively in the spring and fall. So they are ideally... But they will stay alive. They won't do a whole right. lot during the hot summer. Yeah, so they're not going to do much during... They'll just go dormant during yeah. the hot parts of the summer. But then warm season grasses is for... When you have those mild temps year-round. Right. Warm season is for uh, uh, summers. The, the grasses will grow between 80 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The cool grasses, they'll stay green up to about 32 degrees uh, for extended periods. And, uh, you know, so it's warm in the south, cool, cooler in the northern portions of the United States. Some cool season grasses um, are there's there's many there. Kentucky bluegrass is a is a uh, familiar one. That fescue, tall fescue, is another one. And uh, some warm season grasses include uh, Bermuda Bermuda grass, St. Augustine, and the list goes on and on. I'll just give you a few there. We don't need to go through the dozen and a half that we have on all those. Uh, but we want to be careful now because these are some deep rooted grasses. And if they get into your vegetation, your, your vegetable garden, you're going to have to work on getting them out because they're going to put a pretty good taproot down in the ground. Right. So you want to be mindful of that. Think about where you're throwing that grass seed, where if you are going to expand your garden or something, where you perhaps don't want to go in and thatch and, and spread grass and what have you, um, even if it's not something that... You get to this year, you can always reseed in the fall. Right. So, yeah, so think about that. Think about where you might want to grow some vegetables. And you don't have to stand there with a hose and water for 30 minutes a day. Quick snap sprinklers. It's a system in which you can maneuver around your yard, and you can mow right over top of them. It doesn't hurt them, and it doesn't require you to spend thousands of dollars on a sub-irrigation system. And then... Uh, makes it easy for you. You hit the button and it does its thing. Now, before we get out of here, we need to talk about once this is all taken care of and we've gotten everything, the grass, the way we want it, how do we cut it? Sure. So you want to cut it where you leave 
the blade or the height of the grass to about two and a half inches. Well, that certainly is not what we did on the farm. <laughs> right. So, but the but the ideal, especially if you are in a more densely populated area, this is going to help prevent from mosquitoes mm-hmm. living or breeding or whatever they do in the tall grass, especially if we have like a rainy or summer. It's going to help the grass actually kind of grow a little bit better, thicker. So you want to keep it to that two and a half inches. And uh, re- you're only going to remove the top one third of the grass consistently. So, you know, you're not going to let this grow up to eight or nine inches or five or six. You're going to consistently, that's why these um, landscapers, it's on a, on a seven day cycle that they mow and they, they just knock off a little bit in order to keep the lawn crisp, clean, thick, luscious, and healthy. Um, your grass, you know, it, it, good time to mow the grass is when your grass is about two and two, uh, three and two thirds inches tall. So, Keep that in mind. We're wanting to leave a good carpet of grass, a healthy carpet of grass, and because of that, that will smother out all these unwanted weeds. And then if you want the kids to play on it or you're one of these people that don't want anybody on it and you just want to look at it, there you have it. Right. So um, speaking of taking care of your yard or your lawn, we also can talk about taking care of what you grow and also what you eat. Whether you grill or Whether you, you grill. Um, take and turn a, you know, you harvest your own animals for meat consumption. Walton's Incorporated has all the tools you need except for the meat. Right. So we know you care about where your food comes from. Canning, preserving your fruits and vegetables is great, but the meat, waltonsinc.com has everything you need. Seasoning, supplies, you can make sausage, jerky, any other meat product your way to your standards. You want snack sticks that people will actually like? Walton's actually created something called meatjuststicks.com, an informational site to help you find and make the best finished product. Um, They have a full line of their own meat grinders, mixers, sausage stuffers to help you go from animal to edible. Walton's is everything but the meat. Again, that's waltonsinc.com. Or to educate yourself, it's meatjustics.com. And if you're not a butcher and you don't have your own livestock or, or animals that you're going to do this with, they've got a line of seasonings that you can use when, you know, in the house or on the grill that tops all things that we have actually ever purchased and got a hold of. So Walton's Incorporated, Walton's Inc. Dot com. When we come back, it's going to be about growing those kitchen herbs, what you need to know so you can get the most out of them and save the most so you don't have to buy them at the grocery store. You're listening to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show program to help your garden grow better. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. We here at the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show Gardens understand that healthy soil is the key to a successful garden. We know that chemical fertilizer burns carbon out of the soil and kills the microbes needed for a healthy soil ecosystem. No worries. Chicken Soup for the Soil by Dr. Jims will stimulate life into your soil, supplying all the nutrients most fertilizers neglect. Rather than force-feeding water-soluble chemical fertilizer, we suggest feeding the microbes a smorgasbord of 100% biodegradable nutrients that your plants can consume when they need them. The nutrients are readily available to maximize their genetic potential. Chicken soup for the soil will increase the quality of the fruit and vegetables you grow. Visit drjims.com. That's D-R-J-I-M-Z dot com. Did you know that all flour is not created equal? Janie's Mill carefully stone grinds all their certified organic wheat, rye, corn, buckwheat, and heirloom and ancient grains so that you get every bit of taste and nutrition nature intended. Some flours really are better than others, and you deserve the best. Get it at janiesmill.com. I love the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. And like you, we've all struggled to find a good plant support system that can last for more than a season or two and be easily stored. But now there is. Easy Step Products manufactures a unique, multifunctional, multi-purpose plant support system. It's designed for tomato plants, but it's useful for any vegetable or flowering plants you grow. This is like having a 24-7 bodyguard for your plants. The 60-inch heavy-duty Easy Step in post and Easy Rings are overbuilt by design, so that when you combine the two together, they make the perfect plant 
internet support on the market. We've never seen anything like it. We love that you can add it during the growth cycle without damaging the plant. It's easy to adjust them up or down. They store easily. They even have a no-hassle 10-year warranty. Order now and receive the third plant support absolutely free with purchase of a kit and use promo code JOEY123. Buy yours today at EasyStepProduct.com or visit the dealer locator for the closest retailer near you. Rinse Kit, your hose on the go, pressurized water at your fingertips without pumping or battery. Simply fill from your spigot or sink on your way out to the garden, beach, or anywhere. Spray it, wash it, rinse kit. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. Rootmaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit Rootmaker.com. Use coupon code RADIO21 and get 15% off your entire order. How would you like to be able to fertilize, aerate, and dethatch your lawn using just one product and at the same time improve the soil and root development? Introducing Lawn Force 5, a five-way lawn care kit in a bottle. Lawn Force 5 gives you a lush and healthy lawn you can be proud of. And it takes away the expense of hard work that comes with mechanically aerating and dethatching the lawn. Visit our friends at natureslawn.com to find out more about the amazing Lawn Force 5 product. That's natureslawn.com. Use discount code GARDEN-TALK for 10% off your order. Do you know there's a real Tiger Torch? Visit TigerTorchLTD.com for more information. The Water Hoop is a portable water sprinkler system that allows you to target water evenly around the root ball of your tree or bush. Conforms to various shapes for your watering needs. The Water Hoop reduces runoff and saves money. Visit waterhoop.com. You move your lawn sprinklers all over the yard, but you always end up putting them in the same spots. Why not just bury them there? Out of sight, always ready to use, pre-adjusted to water the precise areas you want. Quick Snap Sprinklers makes it easy. In-ground sprinklers without the hassle or expense of laying pipe. Put the sprinklers anywhere in your lawn or garden. Snap on a hose to supply the water. Water on, it pops up. Water off, it drops below ground. You can mow right over it. You can have a buried sprinkler system up and running in just minutes. Each quick snap saves thousands of dollars. They install in minutes and operate for years. Visit quicksnapsprinkler.com. The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Pro Plugger, Dripworks, Waltons Incorporated, Tree Diaper, Janie's Mill, Phylum Bioproducts, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Nature's Lawn and Garden Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Dr. Jim's, Root Maker. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you for being part of the program today. Do you have problems with not being able to keep your trees, your shrubs, your vegetables hydrated? Well, we have a solution for you. It's called Tree Diaper. Yeah, before Tree Diaper, watering trees, shrubs, and bushes was not your favorite job on your property. But let's be honest, with Tree tree Diaper, it's not really a job. Tree Diaper is a revolutionary watering system that slowly releases stored rainwater when plants need it. The Tree Diaper is filled with water from when you water or the rain, and it releases water over three weeks. No pipes, hoses, or electricity needed. Whether you're a first-time gardener or advanced, Tree Diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Every time it rains, Tree Diaper recharges. Made in the USA, check out all the sizes they have available. That's TreeDiaper.com. TreeDiaper.com. So when it comes to growing herbs, you're going to save a buku bunch of dollars. And whether you're just growing sage or basil or thyme or oregano or anything else, the expensive part of that is whenever you uh, go buy the sprigs at the grocery store. But if we grow it ourselves, we can do uh, uh, we can get it fresh and have a lot of it and have to figure out what to do with it. So here's some things in which we need to know in order to successfully grow those herbs you use in the kitchen. Yeah, so for one is that you can... Um, you want to make sure you have plenty of sunlight. So at least six to eight hours of sunlight. It can be as direct as possible. 
but you definitely want it to be at least six to eight hours of sunlight. So choose a spot in your garden or your kitchen or your patio, wherever that gets that sunlight. So uh, you can do that. You can also plant these outside. You don't have to go inside. You know, you said, you, you know, patio, your, your kitchen, but if you wanted to do this in full sun, it can be done in full sun. Yeah, not you just need at least. So maybe you're like thinking, I have this area for my tomatoes that gets the most sun. I have this other area that gets a little bit less sun. You can put your herbs there. Right. And yeah. and the these herbs, if you're going to have anything in containers, herbs are the things to have in containers. They work great in containers. The thing is, you have to be able to make sure you water these because, like, okay, for example, rosemary. If, if in a controlled environment, they like to go through a very wet cycle and a very dry cycle. Uh, if they consistently stay moist, you can develop root rot on them. Other other ones are less sensitive in that realm, but you can use the, the tree diaper and uh, use that for your containers and keep them moist to the ones that need to. Lightly fertilize these plants. These plants are all in the realm of needing a lot of nitrogen because they're green. Right. And another thing to, yeah, they're green, they need a lot of nitrogen. And then another thing is if you have, like you had mentioned the rosemary that likes the dry cycle and the wet cycle, if you if you have other herbs that want more of a consistent watering, you could put those together. So you remember, okay, I'm going to water these every three days or whatever. And then the rosemary and any, any other herbs that might or plants that might like that dry to wet cycle, you can put those in a separate area or just kind of group them together. It's just better for your own knowledge. And another thing is to keep think about like cool weather versus warm weather. So like cilantro likes the cool weather. Yeah, we don't even try growing cilantro outside. How we do grow cilantro successfully, and you can do this year round in your uh, south facing window, even if you had more, you know, a western east facing window, not so much north. Uh, you take a party cup and you just really smother it with seeds and then you dust a little soil on it uh, and you do this every week and you'll have a big party cup full of a bouquet of cilantro and you can get about two cuttings off that cilantro before you have to dig it out or, or pull it out and start over. So it's a great way in order to save a lot of money and have consistently fresh indoor cilantro not going to bolt. Another herb that likes a little bit of cooler weather is parsley and then also dill. Now, we've grown dill all summer long, but maybe if you live in a, a super hot area, it's not going to work out for you. Dill can, in some places, is labeled as an invas invasive species. Right. So that's another thing is that you want to keep in mind, like mint, for example, will spread. Never, yeah, never put that anything except for in a container. Right. And even elevate it above the ground container. <laughs> we put our dill in a container, and because of how it seeds so quickly, we still have dill. I mean, this was what? 10 years ago. It was 10 years yep. ago. Yeah. So, <laughs> so obviously, you know, you want to keep that in mind. If you grow dill, you might want to keep it further away from your vegetables or even other herbs because it will reseed quickly or just be very vigilant about when you harvest it. Let's talk about uh, basil varieties because there are so many different varieties. Many people are familiar with the Italian large leaf basil you use for a very common usage of of that. Uh, yeah, that's the Geno the Genovese sweet basil. Basil is the one known for like the pesto and all sorts of the Italian dishes. So that is the more well known one. If you like a lot of Asian dishes and the, the Thai basil mm -hmm. has that. Um, it's just a little bit, more, not spicy, but more it's kind of, of peppery. Yeah, peppery. Yeah, kind of peppery. And then lemon or lime basil, they have their own distinct flavor. There's a new variety called boxwood basil, and it looks like a miniature boxwood. Um, and it has a very strong basil-y scent to it. So I just want to keep that in mind. Um, chocolate, so if you're like, chocolate basil, oh yeah, chocolate licorice basil. basil. Yep, yeah, there's a lot of different yeah. basils. So if you're like, I want to grow, you know, enough to make my own pesto and, have my Italian dishes, whatever, then you want to grow that Genovese sweet basil. Otherwise, you can experiment and see what you got. Um, and and when, whenever it says lemon basil, lime basil, licorice basil, chocolate basil, it is exactly that taste. There is no, oh, we'll just call it this because, no, it is. it tastes just like you bite in a lemon, a lime, a, a chocolate, a licorice. That, yeah. yeah, that lemon basil tastes kind of like lemongrass, I guess I would say. It still has like it, a little bit of a green it's taste. It's very identifiable. Right, but you can taste the whatever it is. Um, and it's important when you're growing any herbs, 
but definitely basil is to pinch it back. So it's going to get like these little shoots that almost look like flowers. And if you pinch it back, it's going to help its growth. Right. You're going to keep it going. Also, a way to keep these things going is consistently harvest. And we've talked about this in the vegetable world, the the tomatoes, the peppers, the eggplants that continue. Once the, leaf, you know, once the leaves get to a large size, go ahead and pick them off. Go ahead and pe- repetitively, almost like you're harvesting tomatoes. Pull them off, either dry them or use them. However, you're going to pre- you're going to store these, and that's going to encourage and stimulate more leaf development on these plants. Hydration, proper fertilization, all of that will also encourage a healthy, productive plant. Uh, whether you're doing sage, you're doing thyme, you're doing basil, whatever the case, that consistent or rosemary, that consistent harvesting rosemary, you can cut the, you know some of the the uh, limbs off a little bit, uh, and you can just pull the fronds off as well um, to harvest these things. But if you just plant it and walk away and forget it and go, September, I'll harvest it, you're not going to have much basil. Right. And that's one thing to, to keep in mind is the continual harvest. Now, if it's your first time growing different herbs, you might want to try a variety of herbs. And, and we have a friend who is doing gardening for the first time, and she wanted to do she, – she said – I'm, I'm kind of in the mindset, I'm just going to plant a whole bunch of things, figure out then what to do with them once it's time to harvest, but I want to have that option of going, I've got so much, what do I do with it, rather than, I kind of wish I would have planted rosemary or basil or whatever. So she got a whole wad full of herbs from the garden center, which is nothing wrong with uh, buying the plant starts. We've noticed that they are significantly ex- more expensive this year, but... That's just the way life is. You, you'll reap that reward back. You pay five dollars for an herb. You're going if you do this properly. You're going to reap five a uh, twenty to thirty dollars back in what you would have paid if you went to the grocery store, if not more. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's another thing. If if you are allergic or something to an herb, obviously don't try to grow it. Or if you don't enjoy it, then don't don't use that space to grow it. But if you're like, hey, you know, I like all these herbs. I can dry them. I can do this with them. I can put them in oil and freeze them for soups and stews or whatever then definitely by all means you know make yourself grow everything thyme majoram um oregano everything Uh, and you can also incorporate these in amongst your other vegetables you can plant basil around uh the squat that your your zucchini it's called polyculture growing two plants in the same area in order to benefit each other. The fragrance of the basil will confuse the squash bug, squash vine borer, and and if it's the plant's large enough and surrounding and you got enough, it, it'll, it'll confuse it and it'll go elsewhere because it can't find that squash in order to bore into it to lay its larva. So it's a way of you can incorporating a certain level of intercropping, but more of a, a two plants working together for the benefit of both plants in the same area. Right. So, yeah, you can definitely um, involve the herbs into your vegetable growing. And another good thing to use herbs for is maybe you don't grow a lot of vegetables, but you want to you want to grow herbs or you want to expand your edible growing knowledge. You can definitely use herbs in that way because you can even just start them from seed. And that's a fairly cheap option to start them from seed and get that process down. If you start herbs from seed and you don't have patience, don't start herbs from seed. Yeah, a lot of them take like 14 to 30 days yes. to, to germinate. Oh, I didn't, it's not growing. Oh, it, you know, a month later, oh, it came up. That's that's normal for some of these. Yeah. And some of them need a lot of soil. Some of them don't need any soil at all because they need that light in order to do the germination process. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, wh- at this point, early in the spring, it really is beneficial to just go ahead and and invest in plant starts because you're going to be far far ahead of the game even if you are like we're more okay we we know how to grow things right but we'll go ahead and grab a handful of uh plant starts of herbs just to get a jump start on it uh in our gardens too nothing wrong with that Uh, and if you do try to do it at your local independent garden center support the little guys because the big box stores they're going to be fine no matter what you do or don't they're going to sell paint and lumber yeah Summer is near. It's starting to warm up. We're certainly in spring, Holly, and we have to worry about, well, not worry about, but we have to deal with those uh, pesky beetles and grubs. Yeah, so with spring just around the corner, it's time to think about that. Um, So there's Japanese beetles, all sorts of things that could be showing up in your yard or, you know, hopefully soon having 
um, a little barbecue outside and they're going to show up too. So grub gone can be applied to the turf or garden around ornamentals to control grubs and lessen the impact that beetles have on your yard this summer. It's easy to apply with any commercial spreader and irrigate into the soil. Biologically, that it specifically targets grub and beetle invaders without harming beneficials such as bees, ladybugs, or butterflies. And to be honest, it's the only non-chemical that works. You can find out more at phylumbioproducts.com. What's that? That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M bioproducts.com. Phylumbioproducts.com. When we come back, do not go anywhere. Author of the Straw Bell Garden Book. Joe Karsten will be with us. We're going to talk about growing in straw bells. You're listening to The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Have a garden question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now 1-800-927-SHOW. Wild Delight has a complete line of premium feed for wild birds and other wildlife. It contains the finest ingredients for your outdoor birds. Fill your bird feeders with a selection of Wild Delight's premium quality mixes to have a yard full of colorful birds. Wild Delight's premium mixes are made with tasty nuts and berries and not just filler food like milo and cracked corn. Feed the birds the nutrition they need. This keeps your feathered friends coming back year after year. Find out more at wilddelight.com. With the right tools, plant maintenance is easy and more effective. Ironwood Tool Company has the right tools for your project. From pruners to loppers to saws and shears and cleanup tools, get the right tool for this season, making your job much easier. Find them all at ironwoodtools.com. Soul Brew Kombucha is founded and handcrafted in Milwaukee, 100% organic, formulated for ultimate health and enjoyment. Find out the benefits of drinking kombucha and where to purchase at MySoulBrew.com or find them on Facebook at MySoulBrew. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. Seed Savers Exchange has been saving, preserving, and sharing heirloom seeds since 1975 and today continues to provide those seeds for gardeners just like you. They have over 600 varieties. Visit SeedSavers.org to request a free catalog or to purchase seeds online for this year's growing season. That's SeedSavers.org. Protect your plants against damage with a 3-in-1 plant guard and special blend fertilizer. Visit IVOrganics.com. We've been using a game-changing tool called SeedLink to find and review our seeds this year. It makes finding the right seeds simple. It is driven by growers' data so you can really see what's best for your location. Check it out at SeedLink.com or download the mobile app today. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit ProPlugger.com. We know that you appreciate the value of a beautifully landscaped yard, but tackling such a project yourself can seem way too complicated, right? Bloomin' Easy plants are the answer. Their plants are low maintenance and offer exceptional beauty and color for your yard. Plus, they offer free seasonal care reminders with simple how-to videos tailored to the plants that you choose. With Bloomin' Easy on your side, creating the yard that you've always wanted becomes as easy as plant, water, and relax. Check them out at your local garden center or by visiting bloomin'easyplants.com. This week's garden tip is brought to you by Yard Glider, the cart without wheels, loads without lifting, hauls more, dumps faster, built to last, and built for hard work. Perfect for homeowners, arborists, hunters, landscapers. Pull it behind an ATV, a lawnmower, or pull it yourself. Multiple sizes available at yardglider.com. That's yardglider.com. When purchasing plants starts at a garden center, you want to make sure of several things. One, that there are no bugs attached to the plant. Look under the leaves and scratch around on the soil. Make sure the color of the plant is vibrant as it is intended to be. Look for containers that contain more than one of the plants in which you're purchasing. Garden centers charge by the container, not by the number of plants inside of it. So if you purchase those, you've multiplied 
the plants in which you're purchasing for a fraction of the cost. This week's garden tip was brought to you by Yard Glider. The cart without wheels, loads without lifting, hauls more, dumps faster, built to last, and built for hard work. Perfect for homeowners, arborists, hunters, landscapers. Pull it behind an ATV, a lawnmower, or pull it yourself. Multiple sizes available at YardGlider.com. That's YardGlider.com. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Blue Ribbon Organics, Naturally Green Products, Ironwood Tool Company, Easy Step Products, Rinse Kit, Soul Brew Kabucha, Wild Delight, Rikon Vitova, Chip Drop, Bailbuster.com. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you for being with us. Joe Karsten, author of the Straw Bell Garden book, Moments Away. But, hey, do you have carpenter bees? Have you had carpenter bees? Rescue has a product in which will prevent those bees, mud daubers, and other flying insects from damaging your property. Yeah, carpenter bees bore holes in tunnel into wood to lay eggs and care for their larvae. And these holes in tunnels and wood invite mold and rot into homesteads fences and any other wood structures spring is the best time to catch carpenter bees before they mate the trap stick can be used throughout the summer and early fall to continue to control those carpenter bees as well rescue makes a carpenter bee trap stick that is simple to use and pesticide free you hang these from wood structures structures you want to protect you can go to carpenterbeecontrol.com to watch a video about carpenter bees and learn how to prevent them with the trap stick from rescue like all rescue products they're made in the usa and you just go to rescue.com or carpenterbeecontrol.com for more information holly let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for this week joel karsten has worked in the green industry for many years he is the author and inventor of the straw bill garden method He's also an avid vegetable garden. Welcome to the program, Joel. Oh, boy, you make me sound really great, Holly. I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> That's a great introduction. Thank you. Well, we appreciate your time. You've been with us many times on the program, and you always enlighten us with new knowledge each and every time, and, and we appreciate that. So let's just get right into the uh, right into the, the questions here. We've got a lot of people, new gardeners, advanced gardeners, weekend warriors, who've done this for many years, or, or this is the first season, and they've never heard of straw bell gardening tell us what where the ideal came from and how did you come up with the straw bell gardening method and we'll get into more of what that process is in a moment sure yeah you know i grew up on a farm and as a young kid we had a dairy farm and we'd always have a busted bale of hay or bale of straw that would end up next to the barn and six months would go by or a year and after a while, the biggest, tallest, healthiest, greenest thistles on the whole farm were the ones that would grow out of these decomposing bales that would lay by the barn. And even as a little kid, I would notice that. So now we fast forward about 15 years, and I graduate with a degree in horticulture, and I buy my first house, and it turns out I had one inch of topsoil <laughs> at this property that I bought. And having grown up on a farm where there's three feet of sandy loam, you know, you grow beautiful vegetables in that, but now I'm in this this residential lot and I have one inch of topsoil, I figured, well, there's no way I'm ever going to grow a garden in here. And then I, I was in another pickle because I was right out of college and I just bought my first house and I didn't have two nickels to rub together, not to mention, you know, three, $400 to build nice raised beds, which is what a normal gardener would do. But then I remembered those bales that used to lay by the barn years ago. And I thought, you know, if thistles will grow out of those bales, then I, I bet you, tomatoes and peppers would grow almost as well. So I started doing some experimenting and that was it's coming up on 30 years ago already since I started the straw bill gardens method. Um, but basically I, I monkeyed with it for the first couple of years. I, I determined right away, even that first season that I did it, that this was really an effective way to grow a vegetable garden, but I it took me a little while to get it perfected and then to come out with the actual method that I could teach other people. And now it's been, coming up on 30 years and we've spread into we have straw bell gardeners now in 60 countries in uh, 30 different languages we have our books translated into 30 languages and it's just become a popular thing people just love to do it you know it's a really simple but very effective way to grow vegetables anywhere on any surface so you can do this on asphalt or concrete or gravel or if you've got a beautiful yard already you could grow it out in your yard or you could grow it on top of what used to be your 
traditional soil garden if you wanted to do it there. So it can go anywhere. Well, you know, just think of where the world would be at if you, after you graduated college and bought a house and you would have had $400 to be able to raise beds, <laughs> you know, the amount of people that would right. not be able to be growing successfully bunches and pounds and hundreds of pounds of produce out of straw bales across the world. You know, it's very true. It's very true. I uh, probably would, would never have come up with the idea if I'd had the money to build raised beds. Greatest things come out of people with the least amount of money at some points, I guess. That's right. That's what they always say. Necessity is the mother of invention. Right? Yes. So, so there you go. I would yeah. And it, <laughs> oh. it, it's really become popular and, and it's exciting to see what's happened. It's certainly become much bigger than me as an individual. You know, it's kind of become a, almost a niche movement within the gardening industry. And, and you're learning every day, people sending you information going, hey, this is what I've done. And you're like, okay. Yeah, right. You know, I learned from a lot of people. I've taught them the basics, and a lot of people will take those basics that I've taught them and, and expand upon that for sure. I wrote a whole book about that. One of my books was called Straw Bale Solutions, and it was all about people all around the world who are using the Straw Bale Gardens method to be able to grow vegetables in some area or in some situation in the world where their traditional soil and traditional gardening methods would not allow them to grow. So it's everything from, you know, on the side of a mountain in Switzerland to, you know, parts of Holland where it floods all the time in the spring and without building, you know, very expensive dikes and things around your gardens and having pumping systems and everything, people couldn't grow vegetable gardens because, for two weeks in the spring, the water would come and flood 10 inches deep and it would kill everything in your garden. You have to start all over again. And with struggle gardens, it gets it up in the air. So, you know, you're 20 inches, 18, 20 inches on top of a bale and the water can come in 10 inches deep on the bottom of that bale and it doesn't affect your vegetables up on top. So, you know, if it's only there for a short time, a week or two weeks and the water dissipates and your garden continues to grow and you have a, end up with a beautiful garden. You, you didn't have to build any dikes or service any pumps or anything to be able to do it. So it's amazing what people come up with in all different parts of the world to be able to use this method. That's definitely amazing. Now, with the method, um, do people just, you know, you see a lot of stuff like just just put your plants directly in the bale, and obviously that's not correct. You had to do right. some research and trial and error to, to make this work. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. It's elusive because if you drove by a straw bale garden, that's what it would look like. It would look like somebody just planted their tomatoes and peppers right into a a bale of straw in the front yard. And what's really happening is we're not planting it into straw bales. We're planting those things into recently decomposed straw. So what we need to do before we ever plant is we need to condition the straw. And really what that means is sort of um, insider lingo for decompose or compost the straw bale. I uh, don't call it composting because there's a connotation to composting that tells people that they should go in and turn the compost with a you know, pitchfork or shovel or something. And we never turn this. This is like a static compost inside the bale. So what we do in order to make that happen is we add a source of nitrogen to the bale and we add some water, not a lot of water, but just enough to kind of get the bacteria hydrated inside the bale. And then bacteria will do most of this work for us. There's also other decomposers like insects and worms, which you'll see. You'll see some fungi, maybe some mushrooms will grow on the bales. You might see some mold growing on the bales. And then the heavy lifter of all of them, you can't see. And that's bacteria because it's microscopic. You got to have a power, 400 power microscope to even see one of these things. But they're what does the majority of decomposition work. And we feed them a little nitrogen, we give them a little water, and they'll colonize the inside of that bale. And often when they're colonizing, you'll see the bales will get hot, will get warm during that period of time. So it doesn't take very long. It takes about 12 days to get the bales ready. And at that end, at the end of that time, the bales will have probably gotten warm, pretty warm. Sometimes they'll get hot, even 150 degrees. Then they cool off. And by that 12th day, you'll be ready to plant your vegetable garden. So this isn't something you need to plan, you know, four months in advance or anything. You can go and buy a straw bale or you can make a bale yourself. I tell people all the time, you know, if you don't have money to go buy a straw bale, if you have grass clippings and leaves, you can make a bale, believe it or not. We talk about how to do this on our website. We have videos about how to do this, and I also talk about it in my book. But it's real simple. You just put it in a Rubbermaid tub, one of those big, big storage containers. You know, dump all your Christmas ornaments out and bring that tub outside. And fill it up with leaves and grass, and then wet it down, water it down overnight, and then dump that brick of leaves and grass out, and then wrap it with chicken wire. 
real tightly with chicken wire. And then you can use that as a straw bale. We just pretend it's a straw bale. But you can do these out of anything because anything that will decompose will become soil. And that's the ticket. When we're planting into this straw bale, we're not planting into straw. We're planting in a decomposed straw, which is really biologically early stage soil inside the bale. Now, you spoke about using fertilizer. Now, you have a product called Bell Buster. Disclaimer, Joel Carson is a sponsor of our program. You'll hear the ad throughout the program. Uh, what is the difference between the Bell Buster material product than a, and then a, than a traditional fertilizer? Well, we formulated the Bell Buster very specifically for straw bale gardening. So it's got the right amount of nitrogen. It actually has a little phosphorus and potassium in with it, enough to get the plant started until the bale starts to decompose and really provides nutrients. And then it also has two things in it that you won't find in anything else. One is Trichoderma ricei, which is a type of fungi that's synergistic with vegetable roots. So it helps the vegetable roots um, increase their ability to absorb nutrients better. And also we put in there spores, about 250 million spores of Bacillus subtilis, and that's a decomposer bacteria. So we have 250 million spores of Trichoderma and 250 million spores of Bacillus bacteria in every box of Bale Buster that we send out. So we have an organic version and we have a traditional version. Our traditional version does 20 bales in a box, and the organic version, unfortunately, only does five bales because it's not as strong. It's organic, so you got to use a little bit more in order to get the same effect. Um, but it's very cost competitive. Um, we're actually trying. We're working really hard to get into retail. So at some point, we might have it available in retail. But right now, you have to go to our website, which is real easy to get to, strawbellgardenclub.com, or you just go directly to balebuster.com, and that will get you right to our store. And people may think five bales or 20 bales. That seems like a lot. And and to a first-time bale, straw bale gardener, that might be, but you have people that literally do hundreds and hundreds of straw bales each and every oh, year. Yeah. Yeah, I have a guy who does over a thousand bales every year. So yeah, he does, you know, a, a pick your own vegetable plot. Ah. He does it all in bales. So yeah, I've actually had a lady in Tennessee a few years ago that did three thousand bales in her straw bale garden. So, you know, if you have access to bales and can do it on a mass scale, it's a great way, you know, once your bales are used up, so you're gonna use them usually for a year, maybe two years, and then they kind of get decomposed. So you get this beautiful compost. So if you need to do any soil modification to improve your existing soils, this is a great way to do that. You can garden in bales over top of your soil and then use this generous amount of compost that you're creating to till into your traditional soil and help modify that and make it better for gardening as well. So even if it's a short-term fix for a couple of years, people like to use it. Definitely. Now, a concern about using bales is them possibly being sprayed with pesticides. Um, if somebody yeah. has this concern, what would they, what would they have to know? Yeah, I talk to people about this every once in a while, and they ask, well, should I buy organic straw bales? And I say, you know, if you're an organic gardener and you wanted to sell the vegetables that you grow out of your garden as organic, then you would need to make sure that the straw you're, you're gardening in is certified organic. But if you're not concerned about that, um, there, you know, there is always a remote concern about using persistent herbicides. That's really the pesticide that we're worried about here is herbicide or weed killer. But I can tell you, in all my years of doing this, I've never run into a case where someone had this happen in their straw bale garden, where they got a amino rallet or cloppy rallet or something like that herbicide in their bales. And here's, I think this is one of the reasons, is because all herbicides, complex herbicides, are made from hydrocarbon chains, complex hydrocarbon chains. And one of the main foods that bacteria eats is carbon. So even if there were some residue inside of a bale. As soon as it colonizes with bacteria, the bacteria treats that hydrocarbon as a food source and literally goes in and metabolizes that food source and renders that, that hydrocarbon chain inert. So really, it, it literally breaks it down into both carbon and hydrogen. And of course, hydrogen is gas, so it releases that gas into the atmosphere. Now, you know, there may be a situation where if you had a hay bale, first of all, the bad herbicides that we're worried about 
are not even labeled for use on straw. They're really only labeled for use on hay. But we do get people once in a while that will use a hay bale for their straw bale garden, which is okay. They can do that. It tends to decompose very quickly versus um, straw. Straw tends to last for a good two seasons where hay decomposes more quickly. So that would really be the only time I would ever be concerned is if I had a hay bale. And you also got to remember that these farmers are are very strict. Most of them are very strict about following the labels on these chemicals because if they don't follow the labels, they can't buy the chemicals anymore because they'll lose their license. And believe it or not, you can go to prison if you don't follow these labels. So they are pretty strict usually. Now, you might get somebody who just spaced it off or didn't read the label thoroughly or, you know, I don't think anybody would do it criminally because it just wouldn't be worth it. I mean, selling a bale of hay for $8 or $10 is not worth going to prison for a year. So I don't think anybody would do that. But if they did and you happen to get that bale and you happen to plant your straw bale garden in it, your vegetables would come out all contorted and misshapen, and you really would never be able to harvest anything off of that bale anyway. So that would be sort of worst case scenario. And then if that happened, I would tell somebody to thoroughly finish composting that bale in order to get rid of the rest of any of those carbon uh, hydrocarbon chains that might be in it. And what's really funny is if you contact the chemical companies that make these persistent herbicides, They'll tell you that the way to get rid of these persistent herbicides is to thoroughly compost any organic matter that they're spread on. So it would be exactly what we're doing, which is composting these bales. So I'm not saying it's not a concern at all, but it should be a very limited concern for people that want to do this. I mean, if you go to the grocery store and pick any piece of fruit off of the or any vegetable or produce off of the uh, shelf at a grocery store, you have a lot better chance of getting a mouthful of pesticides there than you would if you grew it yourself in your own strawberry garden. So nature. nature. Yeah. <laughs> well, Joe, we greatly, uh, we, Joel, we greatly appreciate the time you've offered us to us. Uh, how can people find your books, some videos, learn more about the, the straw bell gardening method? Sure. I am everywhere online, but the best place to find everything in one place is that straw bale garden club. Dot com. It says club, but it, but you can get a membership there for free. So um, it's pretty easy to get there. We have over 100 videos about straw bale gardening on our website and lots of blog entries and a forum where people can ask questions. And of course, there's links to everything. Um, and if people want to buy books or buy Bale Buster, they can buy it from that site as well. So I really appreciate you guys having me on. I love coming on your show and I always get great response. People love your show and did it. Absolutely. We thank you for taking time out of your day to join Holly and myself and educate all of our listeners across the country. All right. Thank you so much, you guys. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Good bugs to eat bad bugs. Rinconvitova.com. Call or email today. 1-800-248-BUGS. Straight from the farm, fields, and briar patch, Piper and Leaf Artisan Tea is a tea like you've never imagined it. Get our award-winning tea delivered right to your front door and become part of the Piper and Leaf family. Free shipping over $75 at piperandleaf.com. Chapin has the tools to help you this season. We have a wide range of sprayers to help you control pests, weeds, and fertilize your plants. From handheld to ATV sprayers. We have it all. Use our broadcast spreader to feed and seed your green spaces. Water and feed at the same time with our fertilizer injectors. Find shape and equipment at major home improvement and hardware stores and online at chapinmfg.com. Chapin, cover more ground. Make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at dripworks.com. Straw bell gardening is all the rage. Get your bale started easily with the Bell Buster Straw Bell Conditioning Formula. This is the only product that has been specifically formulated for use in straw bale gardening. Each unit contains 250 million colony forming units of trichoderma, fungi, and bacillus bacteria in addition to the fertilizer itself produces fantastic results with a bountiful production of vegetable crops start with the best to get the best traditional or organic formula take the guesswork out of conditioning your straw bale go to bellbuster.com to find out more Deer Defeat is an all-natural repellent to keep deer, rabbits, and groundhogs away from your precious plants. Deer Defeat protects your plants day and night. 
dries clear and odorless. It will not clog your sprayer. Deer Defeat works for 30 days through rain, snow, and freeze. Safe, effective, and works on rabbits. Money back guarantee. To purchase, go to DeerDefeat.com and use code RADIO to save 10% on your order. Deer Defeat. It can't be beat. Ship Drop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door. For free, Ship Drop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to ShipDrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. If you could double the life of your raised bed boxes by sealing the wood with a clear non-toxic wood preservative, would you? Well, now you can with a clear penetrating product called internal wood stabilizer. It's 100% non-toxic and easy to apply. Seal your untreated wood surfaces, even chicken coops, by spraying on internal wood stabilizer. It's invisible, seals the wood from the inside out, and never wears off. Recommended by organic gardening experts. Internal Wood Stabilizer. Check it out at TimberProCoatingsUSA.com. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit ProPlugger.com. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Blue Ribbon Organics. Naturally Green Products. Ironwood Tool Company. Easy Step Products. Rinse Kit. Soul Brew Kabucha, Wild Delight, Rikon Vitova, Chip Drop, Bailbuster.com. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Join Holly Radio Show. Question and answer time. You've got a question, we can get you an answer. Send us an email at gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Garden Talk Radio at gmail.com or you can give us a call at 1-800-927-SHOW 1-800-927-SHOW if you can't get through leave a message we will call you back with the answer to your question dean writes in that i have that i live in southeastern wisconsin i planted garlic last summer october and unfortunately it grew quite a lot this fall i covered it with leaves recently removed the leaves but there's zero growth did i kill the garlic or can I have it yet grow? It should still pop back. That all, all what happened was the leaves smothered the, the growth out. You got a lot of growth in the fall, which is typical. We typically plant the first Saturday in October in Zone 5A here. It will get two, three, four inches tall, normal. We don't cover ours. Some people do decide to cover it. If you cover it too much, you might be stunted a little bit. But if you've removed it and you give it some time, it should pop back up without any problem. So Cass writes, great video. I've been growing okra indoors for the past five weeks and things have started off good. But by the fourth week, my good leaves have started falling off and now no leaves have grown, just the stem, but the stem is still alive. What should I do? Oh, okay. So this is Fusarium wilts and it's caused by a fungal plant pathogen and it can actually survive up to seven years in the soil. It's a spore that gets in your soil and it it kind of kills off things in the okra family. Um, even in store-bought, you could, this could be something that's many, many steps down the chain. Yeah, even if you bought the plants from the store, right? Um, so what you want to do is you want to not grow in that soil anymore. If you've planted that soil into the, to the ground, you would want to um, water it heavily and kind of uh, amend in more organic matter, and that should help. But you could well. plant other things in there. You can plant other yeah, things, that's yeah. That's not related in the okra family. Right. And it would still, nothing be wrong with it. Right. Uh, but you definitely want to just make sure you water it thoroughly and then mix in some um, organic matter right. as well. All right. Uh, can I plant garlic now? Well, yes <laughs> and no. You, you can. It will. You will get some garlic. Uh, the goal of garlic typically is that cold hours that it requires in order to properly develop the bulb, uh, the cloves inside the bulb. That's why we plant in fall and it chills and then we harvest it in late June, early July. Some people decide to plant it in the spring. We ex experimented with that procedure, got garlic. We planted it just as early as we could chisel it in the ground uh, to get some of those cold hours. However, it was about a half the size of the October planting June harvest garlic versus the um, mid-April planting. So you can plant it. You probably won't get much, but it'll be better than nothing. So why not? 
If you got the space, you got the garlic, put it in the ground. Grandpa always said the seeds grow better in the ground than in the bag in the shed. So take it for what it's worth. Um, I'm in southeast Michigan, and I harvested my daylily seed last fall. I thought I could plant them in the raised beds and transplant them later. It's, when I check online, it seems like there's a very complicated process. Can I plant them even though it's late in the year? Um, the existing plants already have several inches above the ground. I would like to make it the simplest successful method possible. Okay, well, you can certainly put them in the ground, uh, cover them, and then as you can just keep the soil moist, and in about one or two weeks, you will start to see them germinate. The daylilies can be grown any time of year, even though they're more... Uh, advised to be grown in the fall. They can grow any time. And once they are growing, then you can move them to their final you know, location after you get them to a desired height. So that will work quite well for you. Well, we were out of time, and we thank you for yours. Did you miss any portion of today's program or want to revisit it in its entirety? You can certainly do that by going to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show podcast. Uh, search for that on your major podcast platforms or the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com under the Season 5 tab at the top of the page. You can send us an email at GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com, and we can send you that link there if you'd like to do that. Tune in next week. We're going to go over small space gardening. Also, growing cucumbers, the success tips that we use in order to get an abundant harvest. And our guest will be founder of tree diaper wang zing he is a water conservationist and infrastructure about urban forestry and green infrastructure in the united states he will be with us and we'll answer your garden questions so until next week for holly baird i'm joy baird and we will see you in the garden <laughs> <laughs>